when should you set the hook on a topwater bait? <laughs> well, of course, when you get a bite. When else? Good morning, guys and girls. June 19, June 19, reading from a Catch a Better Life book. If you don't have your copy of this book, you can go to jimmyhouston.com and get one. You can also go by any Bass Pro Shop or Cabela's, pick you up one if you want it personalized or autographed, send it to me. If you get one from us, if you'll just let us know when you order that book, and we've got a place in there where you can do that, we'll be happy to personalize that and autograph and send it back to you. June 19th, by the way, is Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to everybody out there. John 8, 7 says, He who is out without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. This is one of the famous stories in the Bible, and I love this story. I love this story. Here's what I wrote about it. One of the most priceless times to be out on the water is when it's dead calm. Dead calm. No wind at all. We make a cast. The ripples seem to travel forever. As magic as this calm can be, it can really pose a problem. You know the problem? The fish know that we're there. That's right. We need to fish with our trolling motors down at low speed. We need not to bang anything down in the boat. Set stuff down gently and easily. Don't throw a rod down. Don't drop your tackle box. Be very, very, very quiet. This can be a lot more like hunting than it is like fishing. Like noise on the quiet water, when we condemn others of sin, it can actually destroy the calm in our own lives. It can actually destroy the calm in our own lives. Especially, especially if we're guilty of that very same sin. I tell you, I mean, that's what made this story so great in the Bible. In today's scripture, religious leaders, religious leaders brought a woman to Jesus whom they caught committing adultery. I don't know why they didn't bring the guy also. If they caught her in the act, that means there was a guy involved too. They didn't bring him. They only brought the girl. And they were asking Jesus to confirm their plan to stone her to death. They're going to kill her. That was the penalty for, uh, for adultery in those days. They were going to kill her because they caught her in the act of adultery. And they wanted Jesus to confirm that. They wanted Jesus to pile on just like they were doing. Jesus, knowing their own sin, turned their own words against them. You remember what happened? You remember what happened in that? Jesus kneeled down and in the dirt, he started writing something in the dirt. The Bible doesn't tell us what he was writing. He started writing something down in the dirt. Pretty soon one of them walked away. He kept writing. Another one walked away. He kept writing. Another one walked away. Pretty soon he looked up and there wasn't anybody there but the woman caught in adultery. And Jesus said, where are those that accused you. Where did they go? Is there no one here that accused you? And the woman said, no, they all left. Jesus said, then I don't condemn you either. Jesus forgave her of that adultery. The Bible doesn't tell us. The Bible doesn't tell us what he was writing in the sand. You know what I think he was writing in the sand? I think he was writing girls' names in the sand, in the dirt. I think he, he might have looked up at somebody, you know, Rabbi Paul or whatever, and wrote down Susan. And he might have looked up at somebody else and wrote down Mary Jo. He might look down at somebody else and wrote down some other girl's name. He knew their sin. He was Jesus. He knew their sin. He knows our sin. So we got to be really careful when we start condemning others. Today, our best bet might be to not condemn others. Not condemn others. Here's our tip for today, and it's a great one. Always wait until you feel the fish. That's right. Until you feel the fish to set the hook on topwater baits. When they blow up on that bait, wait until you feel them actually on there. Because they might blow up on the bait and not have it in their mouth. They might miss it. If you don't feel them, keep working that bait. Once you feel them, then set the hook. Most of the time on top waters, you got a couple of big treble hooks on there anyway, so generally they're going to pretty much hook their, their sails. You still need to set the hook, but wait until you feel the bass before you set that hook. Guys and girls, go out there and have you a great one today, and remember, I sure do love you.